How do you start your day? For thousands of people here in Ho Chi Minh City, they have one thing in common, and that's coffee. They all consume coffee, but the way they consume coffee can be black like this, it can be with milk, it can be with sugar, it can be even made with a vacuum sealed chamber. It's completely diverse and ever growing. On today's episode, we're gonna see why the coffee culture here is so rich and so diverse, and just how the older generation and the newer generation consume their coffee. Come on and explore with us on today's episode of Discovery. Whether you're a Starbucks type of person, or perhaps you gravitate towards the independent coffee shop, anyone who visits Saigon soon discovers a thriving cafe scene that they can't help but embrace. Thường nếu mà em đi tụm tụm ra thì thường ra công viên mua cà phê rồi ngồi bệt. Mỗi buổi sáng tôi cũng uống một ly một ly cà phê sữa đá hoặc là một ly cà phê sữa nóng. Thông thường thì tôi uống cà phê đen. Còn đối với một số bữa như là chủ nhật thì tự thưởng như mình thì uống có chất ngọt chút xíu là cà phê sữa đá. Since being introduced to coffee by the French in the 19th century, Vietnam has become not only a huge consumer of coffee but a massive producer as well. The coffee harvest takes place from November to March. And after harvesting, the robusta cherries are sun-dried on the farm or spread on the ground in the farmer's front yard, later to be sold to local traders and exporters. Currently, the most popular way to make coffee in Vietnam is this kind of filter, often made from aluminum or stainless steel. In Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh City, this coffee filter is so popular that many still think it's the oldest way of making coffee. However, few people know that residents in Saigon also used another method to make coffee nearly 100 years ago. Our first stop is one of the oldest cafes here in Saigon that was started in 1938. So come on inside and explore with me. For nearly a hundred years, this alleyway, located on Nguyen Thuyet Thuat Street, District 3, has been waking up to familiar sounds from a cafe. Whether it's a sunny or rainy day, Song and her family always prepare to sell coffee very early in the morning. The cafe's menu mostly contains old-styled coffees served in Saigon. Song's father was from Hue and then later moved to Ho Chi Minh City. He learned how to make coffee from Vietnamese people of Chinese origin and later altered the recipe to make it his own. He then passed down this intangible but precious asset to his daughters. I think it's really interesting. For her, the cafe is it's not just about coffee or customers, it's her family tradition. I'm really excited to get a chance to look inside on how she makes the coffee and go behind the scenes and seeing how this tradition's been passed over the years. To make the perfect cup of coffee, first a precise amount of ground coffee is put into a stocking. Then, the stocking is soaked in boiling water in a glazed terracotta pot. Next, the coffee is stirred so that its rich and distinct flavor is absorbed into the water. Finally, the coffee mixture is poured into different pots so it gets the desired flavor and texture. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and lift this up. All the way up. Oh. Okay, and pour it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look at that, it's so thick. It looks really good. Oh, okay. Okay. 
It's really hot on this stove right here. I'm just gonna return the favor and pull her down. Come on. Ah, come on, You got two stoves here. You've one one big stove here where they make the coffee on, and they also sanitize the glasses. And then you have another stove here where they're just boiling the hot water. So these two stoves going on at once, which makes the, the room really, really hot. You feel like you're in an oven. <laughs> So just finished uh, serving coffee to these people and I'll say it's pretty hard work. Uh, I made myself a little coffee to relax and just sit down with them now. I'm about to try it for the first time. Ah, come on. I think she saw me sweating in there so she brought me some cha da. <laughs> come on. Uh, it's really good, really rich, uh, really rich in flavor and it's really, uh, it's got that dark roast to it. I think that's from the double pour that you saw in there. Um, it's really interesting too when you're inside here, it's the ambiance here. Uh, you feel like you've stepped back in time. The music is like music from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, a mix of Vietnamese music and Western music. And you can even see just the ash on here from decades of smoke from making coffee and, and people coming inside here and smoking. The old apartment block at number 42 Nguyen Hue is one of the epicenters of coffee culture in Ho Chi Minh City because it boasts multiple cafes inside. I am going to be checking out some of the cafes here to see what they have to offer. All the, uh, the ceilings got these bamboo baskets that they color. Uh, you can see this one here is green and you got red. Um, it really gives a nice ambiance to the place. Makes it feel like it's a European cafe. They even take the, uh, looks like an old bird cage and turn that into a lamp. Really, really unique. I've never actually seen anything like that. Oh, you guys got food as well. Nice. All right, we got coffees. Uh, Cafe Suda. Um, so this place here has two, uh, two different choices for coffee. The Vietnamese black coffee here and Vietnamese milk coffee, either hot or cold. Uh, and that's it, that's it. Uh, they have a few choices for tea and some food options. Come on. Saigon Oi. This one looks promising. You got some kind of a workshop in there as well. Let's see what it is. Xin chào. It smells really good in here. Let's find out what that is. really interesting that these coffee shops here, they have to do something different to stand out from all the other coffee shops. Uh, so this one here actually has a do-it-yourself fragrance store. We can make candles, make essential oils, and even do little uh, spray bottles here. 
It's really cool because a lot of cafes, they want to attract the young people in Hanoi and in Saigon. And you start to see so many of these starting to pop up here. And the place is very like simple. It's got like a, a minimalist uh, vibe to it. You have all these like plants right here growing on the side. That's me too. And they've actually cut the pots in half. Uh, and used half there, half there, half there. It's cool. It's got like a minimalist feel to it. Oh, that's much better. We got a better view from up here, uh, and it's a bit quieter than the second floor. You can even see uh, right over there is the famous uh, Ho Chi Minh City uh, skyscraper over there. It's even got a helicopter landing pod on it right over there on the side. Really, really cool. And from this level here on the fifth floor, you can see like some other buildings. You can start to see the rooftops, uh, which are quite nice. All the different colors, the blue and the brown, gives it a, a majestic feeling to it. Still a little bit noisy, but definitely less than the second floor. You wouldn't even know this is a coffee shop here. Uh, it just looks like another apartment complex. So we're about to go inside and check it out. It's really cool, it's really hidden away. I mean, just walking in here, the other two buildings here, the other two rooms, uh, are actually just residential, people living there. And this itself looks like an apartment complex. Uh, I never even know what I'm gonna find inside. Xin chào. Really cool, I love the theme in here. It's got the sky theme with even clouds as uh, the lights here and the blue on the wall. It's a lot smaller than all the coffee shops we've been in, but uh, it's really cool. You can feel that it's like a small apartment. Where are you guys from? I'm from Saigon. I'm from Hanoi. Oh, cool. I actually live in Hanoi. Uh -huh. um, and this building, I think, is really, really cool. Yeah. Every floor has like a different coffee shop. Yeah, I know, right? Have you guys been to any other coffee shops? Mm, not yet. Not yet? What do you guys think of this one here? Cool. It's cool? I like the view. Yeah, it's a really cool view. Yeah. Yeah, because I heard that this one is the highest coffee shop in Saigon. This is the highest one in Saigon? Yeah, I heard so. Wow. And this used to be an apartment, right? Yeah. Someone used to live here. That's crazy. <laughs> I want to have a private place to go and relax, like this place. Mm -hmm. So you feel like this is one place you kind of like get away from everyone and yeah. it's quiet? Cool. And I think a lot of people think about it the same with me. So a lot of people like this here? Yeah. I think one thing about Saigon coffee culture that's unique is that they really have a coffee and an atmosphere to meet to meet anyone's needs there. Anyone from really old to really young, they're going to be able to find a coffee shop that suits them. Saigon has a really unique coffee scene. Uh, we're about to explore a cafe that's not just a normal cafe. They sell coffee, they sell food, and they also sell something really, really special. Come in and find out what that is. So, we actually use these little things here to pay for the coffee. You give the person over there money, they give you this little coupon, and we exchange that for the coffee. Located in an alley on No Cheng Long Street, Bin Ten District, Cafe Cao Ming is the venue for the Cho Be Chai, an antique market uh, with a destination for antique enthusiasts in Saigon every Sunday. 
Saigoners young and old are turning up to purchase old school items from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Many people visit this market to see objects that connect with their past. Tất cả những cái gì chung quanh bác thì nhiều kỷ niệm lắm. Người ta hay quyến luyến với những cái đồ đạc ngày xưa. Chứ còn bây giờ đồ mới thì đầy dãy mua cái gì chả được. Sometimes this is also an interesting way to find out more about history. I was really interesting about uh, about the whole picture uh, in this market uh, because uh, my uh, grandmother and my mother who are Vietnamese, I can imagine uh, the life they had when they were when they were in Vietnam. It's like this picture. It's really cool. All of these uh, photos are old and they're about 30 to 50 years old. These photos are really cool. They give you a glimpse of what life was like uh, 30 to even 50 years ago. You can see in this photo right here, it's like uh, it's a party. It looks like a social gathering or maybe even a wedding in Saigon. And even this one right here, it shows, shows traditional Vietnamese women uh, in the uh, dress, which is called a uh, alzai. Wow. This is a photo from 1953, and it shows, uh, it shows a man selling newspapers there. Really, really cool. And you can even see, like, the newspaper there. It says, Yeast Weit. Yeast Weit. Sounds German. I don't know. Uh, bao, bao new, Tim? Đây là 100 ngàn Việt Nam. 100? Oh. Yes. 50 ngàn? Oh, 50 ngàn à. Ờ, thế bán luôn. Bán để làm quen. Yes. OK, come okay. on. Okay. Haha, score. So his first offer on this was 100,000. Uh, I bargained down to 50,000 for it. And this is probably my, my favorite one here of a vendor selling newspapers. Okay, come on. The cafe combined with the market has been running on and off for around nine years now, most recently reopening in 2012. Here, visitors can enjoy their coffee while going around and choosing their favorite items. Items on sale here must have clear origins. Buyers and sellers are happy to barter with each other for a fair price. Where's this one from? Is this from Florida? Yeah, this is uh, come from uh, Florida. Everything the same, same place. At the very front of the space are Tam Lin and John, a pair of vendors selling foreign Thank antiques. You. The duo has been coming to Cao Min for about six months now and are very pleased with the way business is going. Here, what's on this table? What's your most favorite uh, prize piece? I like piece? nice clocks, nice Swiss li little alarm clocks like this, stuff like this. Uh, I like Indian stuff. That's a nice Indian this is, plane. This is Indian? That's an Indian plane. I, I Did you get this from India? Stoke. No, it came from France, actually. Did you actually eat on this at one point? No, I ah. don't, you don't eat off it. Gotcha. But, um, yeah, it's a nice plate. And what's the scene? It looks like maybe she's like well, dying in his arms. Or... Well, it's like some kind of um, family scene. I don't know exactly what's happening. But... Any uh, history for any of these these clocks here? Well, the clocks are alarm clocks are like vintage alarm clocks, 1930s, 1940s, 1960s. That's like 1950s. That clock, 60s. Some work, some don't. With the name Chobe Chai, founders of this market aim to create a space for exchanging antiques, knowledge, and sharing common interests, rather than a place for buying and selling.
The coffee menu here is not so diverse, but this market is still something worth visiting for anyone who wants a combination of iced milk coffee and antiques. The Workshop Cafe is located on the third floor of an old building in downtown Dongkhoi area. Quinn? Yeah. Hey, Brian. Quinn. How nice you doing? to meet you. It's a cool place. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Brooklyn. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, at first, actually, this is an uh, old building, ancient building, like 80 years ago. Oh, wow. And then we reconstructed it a little bit. We keep all the original, you know, like uh, windows, bright air. And so, with the coffee, like, what do you, what kind of coffee do you guys serve here? Yeah. Let me show you our menu and talk briefly yeah. about that. As you can see, these are all the beans that mm. uh, the coffee beans that we use here, mainly uh, local beans from Dalat, Vietnam. Ah, okay. Here we use 100% of Arabica, sourced from, uh, you know, a very small production. Mm -hmm. We mm. have the uh, espresso beans that we use to brew on the uh, very famous uh, cappuccino or latte. Uh, and then for the drip coffee for filters, we keep the local beans stable every week and then we rotate. What do you mean by stable? Uh, it's made like we have three different uh, kind of beans. I see, I got okay. We got rotate. It. The, the, the oh, you uh, it. international ah. beans and we keep the Vietnamese beans. Gotcha, so you guys keep the, the Vietnamese here from Dalat and the other ones you rotate. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And then we pair those kind of high quality beans with different kind of methods. What's so special about the workshop coffee is that they're trying to promote this organic uh, coffee here in, in Vietnam that's grown here and it's made in a way which is the Arabica uh, roast, which is a very special roast that's quite popular around the world. But they're doing it here from beans that are grown in Vietnam that are organic. And the way that they serve the coffee is, is really, really neat. Uh, they have so many different kinds. So whether you want traditional, just a, a normal pour, or they have this, this siphon cylinder where they're using fire to, to cook the coffee. It's really special and they're taking really, really modern and futuristic ways to make coffee and offering that to the people of Saigon. Which one should we try first? What do you I recommend? I think we can try the seafood, and then after that, maybe the air press, yes. because the stronger taste yes. later. Let's do it. So we'll start off with this one. And are we gonna do the local, let's do the local coffee. Sure, yeah. no problem. I wanna try the deluxe coffee. Is that just to get the best flavor? Yeah, and the, uh, I think it's also produced, you know, very consistent coffee mm. all the time. Right. Wow, very precise. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it will take a few minutes. It's like something you see like in your bathroom tub. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, here we uh, we often jokes uh, jokes with uh, each other that we only serve slow coffee for slow life. It's really cool. I've actually never seen anything like this before. Yeah. So it's pulling the water. It heats the water up mm -hmm. and that pulls it up. Yeah. Wow. How do you get those subtle uh, aromas and flavors? Is it grown with the soil that you would use? Uh... Yeah, uh, we can say that 
you know, and then also from the uh, elevation, from the altitude uh, for the Dala province where uh, we get the coffees from. Right. At the elevation of around 1,500 meters above sea level. Okay. That elevation creates, you know, like a little bit uh, more chocolatey, caramel, and, uh, you know, like a little bit stronger body right. and higher elevation. Ah, interesting. Very good. Yeah, you can definitely taste the, the subtle caramel flavor to it and that sweetness you were talking about. It's almost, I feel like we're like sampling wine. It's like, yeah. but it's, it's I've, from all the coffee that I've tried today, it definitely has uh, really like uh, these distinct, uh, subtle even uh, flavors of the caramel and the sweetness. Whereas a lot of the coffee I feel like I've tried today has been very, uh, it's been very strong. It's just yeah, like strong punchy. coffee. It's not bad, yeah. but it, like it's very just strong coffee. And this more has these, these subtleties to it. Definitely smells, it smells thicker and stronger. Let's give it a try. I feel like I still taste the the, uh, the chocolate flavor and the nutty flavor in the coffee, but I think with the AeroPress, it's definitely stronger. So I definitely recommend uh, you trying the siphon or trying the uh, AeroPress. If you're looking to find coffee with a little bit more flavor and really taste those subtleties uh, that we were just talking about. Living in Vietnam, I always just order Cafe Sudas. That's all I've ever had really here. Uh, but going to Saigon, I realized there's so many more options than the traditional Cafe Suda. You can see that with the really old coffee shops where you're just sitting down, reading a newspaper, and ordering a traditional cup of coffee, to the coffee shops where you're walking around and through apartment buildings and exploring all these different kinds that are playing different music. You really see how it just kind of evolved over the years. But what's special about it is that not only has it evolved over the years, the old ones still exist. So you can explore all these different coffee shops and really see uh, Sagan's culture through the coffee shops. It's really, really special.